Welcome to Professional Mariner Conversations, brought to you by the editors at Professional Mariner Magazine and ProfessionalMariner.com. Each interview is your direct link to a maritime industry personality discussing issues affecting your career. And now, here's our latest conversation. I'm Dominic Yanchunas of Professional Mariner Magazine and ProfessionalMariner.com. We are coming to you today from the State University of New York Maritime College. Our guest is Captain Ernest J. Fink. He's chairman of the Professional Education and Training Department here at Fort Schuyler. Captain Fink is one of the foremost experts on STCW. Of course, I'm talking about the international standards of training, certification, and watchkeeping. As a result of the 2010 STCW Manila Amendments, the Coast Guard is getting ready to release new rules later this year that will govern several aspects of maritime licensing. Some of the changes will be pretty significant, and Captain Fink is going to tell us a little bit about what to expect. He was actually a delegate to the Manila Convention, representing the International Association of Maritime Universities. Captain, really great to be with you today. Thank you. Great to be here. Now, this proposed rule has been quite a challenge for the Coast Guard, and there's been a tremendous number of comments from the industry. Uh, let's go through some of the significant changes here. Let's start with the basic training requirement in STCW, uh, which will be mandatory every five years. What's the reason for that, and what would the refresher courses look like? Well, as you know, uh, currently all mariners uh, applying for a credential must in order to get their STCW endorsement must have training and basic safety training and there are four elements to that. Uh, what the 2010 amendments require is that certain things in that training that cannot be done safely aboard ship be repeated every five years such as fire field training, pool exercises in the pool, swimming pool, with life rafts, with immersion suits, life jackets, which is all covered under the five-day basic safety training, but this will have to be repeated by all mariners every five years. I believe there's a, a new requirement for advanced firefighter training. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Right. Again, for an original license, for an original credential, uh, mariners must have training in advanced firefighting. This is above and beyond the basic firefighting that's part of basic safety training. And that also is going to be required now every five years, is training in advanced firefighting. There would be a new tanker man designation in which uh, I guess they would be splitting the endorsements up three ways. How is that going to work? That's correct. Uh, the tanker man person in charge endorsement that mariners currently get to serve as tanker men, for dangerous liquids, the, the regulations currently allow oil and chemical to be combined in that dangerous liquid endorsement and under the new 2010 amendments to the STCW it will be broken apart so there will be some training required for oil some separate training required for chemical and service on chemical ships and also for liquefied gases very specific for each type of cargo and uh, experience on those types of vessels. The Manila Amendments call for a new medical certificate and physical exams every two years for each mariner. That doesn't seem like it could be synchronized very easily with the uh, five-year licensing cycle in the United States. What are the Coast Guard's options in dealing with harmonizing that? Well, what we've seen is the August 2011 Supplemental Notice of Proposed Rulemaking. And in that rulemaking, what it proposes is for anyone applying for an STCW endorsement that they have a physical and a medical certificate that would be issued for a maximum period of two years. And that's for the STCW. For persons under the age of 18, that certificate will be valid only for a period of one year. First class pilots will continue to require to have a physical every year, annual physical. And for all other mariners, in other words, those mariners serving on inland waters and not applying for an STCW endorsement, what the Coast Guard is proposing is that they would stay on the five-year interval for physicals. We've also heard a bit about the new requirement, which would be now mandatory for ECTUS competence for masters and mates. That's been voluntary in our country up till now, uh, but I guess now it'll be mandatory on vessels that are equipped with electronic chart displays, right? What was the reason behind this, and, and will there be enough qualified trainers to, to handle the, the training needs when, when this goes into effect? Yes. In the 2010 Manila Amendments, there's a 
in the tables for officer in charge of a navigational watch, there are specific training requirements for ECTUS. The IMO is also working on a model course for ECTUS, which I believe the U.S. and the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy has uh, drafted that IMO model course. Once that is accepted at IMO, that will become the standard for training in ECTUS. And all training providers in the United States, including the academies and other training providers, will have to have their ECTUS courses approved to those IMO model course standards. We've actually heard that there's a, perhaps a question about whether the IMO model is appropriate. Could you say a few words about that controversy? Well, yes, there are many IMO model courses. Um, they are developed by a number of different entities. And uh, in some cases, there are very complete, very large documents, and they actually become the standards that various administrations, such as the United States, the United States Coast Guard on behalf of the United States, will rely upon as the standard for any course submission for Coast Guard approval. So, you know, there's a, probably a difference of opinion out there among mariners of how detailed that information needs to be and, and, and what it needs to look like. Um, but, yes, there is the potential that IMO model courses, which set the standard, can be very lengthy and very uh, complicated, perhaps more than what's necessary. Captain, all of these changes must have quite an impact on the maritime academies. Um, I wonder uh, if you could say a few words about how Maritime College here and some of the other academies may be uh, getting ready for all of this. Yes. Um, of course, we know this is right around the corner. The 2010 amendments come into effect in 2017. However, at the academies, we have a four-year lead time because our approved programs are four years in length. And so we really need to begin our training in 2013. And we'd like to even be ahead of that. Um, we have all been working for some time now. We all communicate with one another through conference calls and video conferences and, and actual meetings. We're, we're all sharing information. And at New York Maritime College, we've formed what we call a cross-functional team of all the key uh, stakeholders and players in the STCW training. And we've already taken a look at the 2010 amendments and mapped out for ourselves where all of this training should go, uh, whether it's on the training ship during the summer sea term or whether it's in a particular licensing courses, uh, a course or an STCW course. And so we have a pretty good idea of how we are going to approach this. And, of course, all of this will need to be finalized and submitted to the Coast Guard for approval. But there has been a, a tremendous amount of work already looking at the 2010 amendments and trying to figure out where all of this is going to fit. I bet there has been a lot of work. Captain, we have about a minute left, and I wonder sure. if, uh, if you would say a few words about the, um, you know, we're all expecting the Coast Guard's rule to be released later this year sometime. What's your feelings about how the Coast Guard is interpreting the STCW amendments, and are they interpreting the amendments prudently um, in the interests of maritime safety and also the industry? Well, of course, you know, the academies, I think all of us here in the United States that are involved in training of mariners endorse strong safety and oversight, and, and we're all very concerned with the health and well-being of mariners and, and the safety of shipping. And we want to see the proper training and operation of the equipment aboard ship. Uh, we don't want to have a negative impact to any of the uh, companies. But we are at the same time, I guess, a little concerned about overregulation. And this has to do with the interpretation of the international standards. Because we know from experience that, you know, each country can interpret a broad set of international standards differently. And we don't want to see that happen where it disadvantages companies or inhibits the ability, in our case, of educational institutions to do our job. So I think in the end, what we need to have with the Coast Guard, with everyone involved here, is a cooperative effort to produce the best trained mariners in a very competitive environment. Captain Ernest J. Fink, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And this has been a Professional Mariner podcast. I'm Dominic Yanchunas. Thanks for listening. 
You have been listening to Professional Mariner Conversations. To join the conversation, sign up for e-newsletters or subscribe to Professional Mariner Magazine. Visit ProfessionalMariner.com. And don't miss our licensing and training hub, which you can access directly from the homepage. We hope you enjoyed today's conversation. Thank you for listening. Join us next time as we bring you another timely interview from the maritime industry.